us reward system. God's reward system. God's reward system. How do God reward your service? Or do God ever reward you for your service? Were you just called to just serve God and end up in penury? No. God has a reward system. God reward system. We're going to read a couple of Bible verses. Who we'll starts from Joshua? Joshua chapter fourteen. We'll be reading from the Living Bible. Joshua 14. God reward system. You remember when Moses, the servant of God, sent 12 spies to go spy out the land which God has promised them. Ten of them came back with an evil report. But two of them came back with a good report. The Bible says, out of those two that came back with the good report, God make, made a declaration and said to one of them, which we're going to read the account right now. It's, you found the, uh, the Living Bible? Glory to God. Before we do um, Joshua 14, let's do Numbers 13, verse 30, the Living Bible. Numbers 13, verse 30. So, but Caleb reassured the people as they stood before Moses. Let us go up at once and possess it, he said, for we are well able to conquer it. That's Caleb talking. Joshua equally declared the same thing. We are well able to take the land. So Caleb and Joshua had the same faith to express what God was going to do. Even when there were difficulties, even when they saw people that were bigger than them, even when they saw the resistance from the kingdom that was greater than them, because God said it, they believed it. Because God said it, they look up to it. They consider those people as weak, even though they were stronger. They look strong. But they know that God is stronger, and if God be for them, they were going to be able to conquer the land at once. Hallelujah. So, what happened? God was mad about the other ten. Because they sow the seed of fear in the hearts of others. They made the people to murmur and say, where is God? Can God really do what he said he is going to do? Now that we have spied out the land, 
We know that the people there, they are not weak. We know that the people there, they are strong. And we look like ants, grasshoppers before them. In your life today, you may be facing something more difficult than you are. Bigger than you are. Bigger than your resources. Bigger than what you can handle. Don't count God out of it. When God is with you, you are in the majority. When God is with you, his strength becomes your strength. When the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not unto your own understanding, what he's saying is that when you trust God, you duplicate yourself in God's strength. You duplicate yourself in God's ability. God's ability becomes your ability. Where you cannot talk, God will speak on your behalf. So what did God do? God said, those that believe the lie will not enter into his promise. The same still stands for us today. If we choose to believe what God says, we will not only have what is promises, but we'll have the reward in our hands. So what is God's reward system? Two people, two ministers went out and came back with a good report. Joshua and Caleb. Joshua and Caleb, they had the same declaration. They said the same thing. They said the same thing. They said, we are able. We are able to take the land which God has given to us. We are able to take the land which the Lord has given to us. Numbers 14, verse 24. The Bible says, But my servant Caleb is a different kind of man. He has obeyed me fully. I will bring him into the land. I will bring him into the land. He entered as a spy. I will bring him into the land. He entered as a spy. And his descendant shall have their full share of it. What happened to Joshua? Joshua came with the same report. Joshua came with the same testimony. Joshua had the same faith. Joshua was, was one of the two. But God's reward system is not as man rewards. God's reward system does not depend on your timing. God's reward system is that what, he, what, what his word says he will do is what he will do. It might not be as you calculated it. It might not be as you thought about it. It might not be the same time your brother is getting blessed that you are going to get blessed. But God will not forget your work. God will not forget your dedication. God will not forget all that you have done. Did God forget Joshua? He did not. But if you read the account, God was always addressing Caleb. Why? God was addressing Caleb. I'm going to give you and your descendant the land which you went to spy out. What of Joshua? What would Joshua feel? There was no message for Joshua. There was no announcement that Joshua, one day, you and your children, you will inherit the land. There was, there was a judgment on those that did not believe. The only one that God did not talk to was Joshua. Joshua was left out of the whole equation. God said, for those that refuse to believe, 
they and their children, they will not enter the king, they will not enter into the promised land. Therefore, Caleb and his and his descendants, they are going to enter into the promised land and they will inherit it. But what would Joshua be thinking? If he was to be man, but Joshua was man, was a man. But if God was man, you would think that God has forgotten Joshua. But did you know that God has the best? God has the best. God, who called Joshua, had more than enough for every person that was in that camp. God has more than enough for everyone that will enter into that, into that nation we promised them. But did you know why? Because God had a special, a special blessing for Joshua and his family. You may have been serving God with all of your life. And you see people, they are getting blessed. You may have married the same time. Your friends has given birth to 10 children. And you have been praying. You've been dedicated. You've been doing all that you need to do. God has not yet answered you. But the same God said, I was the one that answered Hannah. And I gave her children. And his children became more relevant than the children of the rival. That same God is your father. You may have started a business and you've been giving and giving and praying to God. Others have done well. Others have prospered. Some of, some of them are not even Christians. They do elite you and there is a great reward. Now you begin to think, has God suddenly forgotten me? I'm here to announce to you that the blessings of God are without repentance. That when God said, I will bless you and you will be a blessing, he has not forgotten you. God did not forget Joshua and God will not forget you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. God spoke to to Caleb. I will bring I will bring you into that land and you will enter with your ancestors or with your descendants. And you will have the full share in it. But do you know that what God reserved for Joshua was that Joshua was the one that would give a part of this land to Caleb. God did not say anything to Joshua. But he gave the whole land to Joshua. And Joshua was the one that would give the part of it to Caleb. Let us read it now. Hallelujah. Joshua chapter 14 now. Joshua 14, we read verse 1 first. Joshua 14 verse 1. The conquered land of Cana was allotted to the remaining nine and a half tribe of Israel. Verse 2. The decision, the, the decision as to which tribe will receive which area was decided by throwing dice before the Lord, and he caused them to turn up in the ways he wanted. Did you hear that? God already knew who he was going to give the land to. But the people in their own wisdom said, we don't want to guess. We will use dice. We will throw dice. We will allot it. We will, we will 
um, we would do, um, you know, you just, <laughs> I, I, I think if, if you were American, they would call it American lottery. But whether they did lottery or not, God already knew who he was going to give it to. And God now turned that dice. If they said number six was going to be for, for James, it doesn't matter if it was Mary, the court face. It doesn't matter if it was Nigeria, the call as a country. God will manipulate it in such a, a way that it will come and be for James. God's reward system is not as man designed their reward. Glory be to God. Verse 6. The land given to Caleb the land given to Caleb, a delegation from the tribe of Judah, led by Caleb, came to Joshua in Giga. Remember what the Lord said to Moses about you and me. Remember what God said to Moses about you and me when we were at Kadesh. But Kidesh Bania, Caleb as Joshua. All right. Why did Caleb come to Joshua? To remind him of God's promise. To remind him what God promised him. Why didn't God just give it to Caleb directly? Because he gave the whole land. He gave the whole land to Joshua to administer to his brethren. May God give you more than you deserve. In the name of Jesus Christ. When you think that you'll be forgotten, when you think that you've not been rewarded, may God remember to reward you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Verse 8. He said, But our brothers who went with us frightened the people. He's remembering what happened. And discouraged them from entering the promised land. But since I had followed the Lord my God, since I have followed the Lord my God, what happened next verse? Moses told me, the session of Cana, you were just in, shall belong to you. He said, the session where he, he went to, the part that he saw, the part where there were giants, the part where other people equally saw and they were afraid. He said, that part that you saw, that looked impossible, I said, that part is going to be yours. He said, that was Moses said. He said, that session of Cana, you were just in, shall belong to you and your descendant forever. This was 40 years. How many years? 40 years ago. 40 years ago. I said, the promises of God, they are yes and they are amen. Irrespective of time, because time is irrelevant with God. God knows the best time to reward every man. God knows the best time when he will give you that land. Don't you know that as the, as the giants stayed there for 40 years, that they have improved their skills? They have even grown. They have increased in size. Now they have more technology, but that did not really matter to God. It doesn't matter how difficult it might be. It doesn't even matter how old that promise is. 
but you will stand upon the word of God. You will stand upon the word of God. You continue to declare it. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. He has told me that he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. And nothing shall stop me. I am going to do it with all of my resources. I am going to do it. I may not have enough right now, but I'm believing God that he is able to supply all of my needs according to his glorious riches in heaven. It is not my ability, it is God's ability. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 22. Verse 22. The same chapter, verse 22. We are in uh, Joshua 14. Oh, sorry, verse 12. Verse 12. It says, so, I am asking you, who is the you there? Joshua. He said, now, Joshua came to, um, Caleb came to Joshua. And said, remember what God said to us. When we were much younger, when we were in the same church, where we prayed the same prayer, when God said he was going to answer, he said, now I have come. He said, so I am asking you, give me the hay country that the Lord promised me. After 40 years, don't forget what God has spoken to you. Don't forget the revelation you have received. Don't forget the testimony of the word of God in your life. Don't let go. You may not be strong in your body, but the Bible says by his stripes that you have been healed. In the name of Jesus, you declare it over yourself. In the name of Jesus, by his stripes I am healed. Caleb said, I have come. I have come. I have come to ask that you give me the hill that the Lord promised me. You will remember that as spies, we found the anarchy living there in great war city. He's telling you the obstacle that they saw. It looked impossible. They live in a world city. If you don't have visa, you cannot come in. Fortified city. Strong city. Nobody goes out and nobody comes in without the people knowing. But God said, I was going to give it to you. He said, the land, the anarchy, live, living there in great war cities. But if the Lord is with me, if the Lord is with me, I shall drive them out. For us, it's not that if the God is with us, because he has already said, I will not leave you nor forsake you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. So we are not going to ask God if you are with me. So what you are going to say? In the name of Jesus, I am taking over the land. In the name of Jesus, I speak health. In the name of Jesus, I declare prosperity. In the name of Jesus, I dethrone principalities and powers. Because God is already with us. He said, I have come. I have come. There will be a time in your life 
that you have to come to that place and you said, I am no longer going to wait. It is now all this. It must happen. The word of God must be true in my life. The word of God must manifest in my life. The word of God must do me well. I refuse. I refuse to allow Satan to steal the promises of the word of God concerning me, concerning my ministry. I refuse to allow Satan to attack my body. I refuse to allow Satan to attack my finances. I refuse to allow things to remain the way they are. That's why I love that song. Nations be open. Nations be open. Bow to the name of Jesus Christ. Bow. Good news is coming. And we are the bearers of that good news. We carry that anointing. We carry that possibility. We carry the God's presence. Without us, the world will perish. We are not victims. We are the blessed of the Lord. It doesn't matter who occupies that land right now. It doesn't matter who is doing that same business that you do. But by the power of the anointing out of the Holy Spirit in you, you will overtake all of them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where others are suffering losses, when they operate with the wisdom of man, you tell them to give and say, why will I give to the work of God? And you have given. I declare that God will multiply it back to you in the name of Jesus. Everyone that says, everyone that laughs and say, oh, I am going to see how this is going to turn out. It is too late. Because God said the heavens and the earth, they belong to me. I determine all the seasons. I determine it. All we need to is to plug in in his promises. The Lord is our shepherd. We shall not want. The Lord is the strength of our life. Of whom shall we be afraid? When the wicked come upon us to eat up our flesh, they stumble and they fall. When they try to occupy our land, they stumble and they fall because the anointing works on our behalf. God's Reward system. It's not as mass plans it. God, God, God will always keep his word. The, word. the Bible tells us that he exalts his word above his names. When you hold on to that word, It's Psalm 111, Psalm 112. Psalm 112. Let's read it from verse 2, 3, and 4. Let's see what he says. He said, Praise the Lord for all who fear God and trust in him are what? They are what? They are blessed. He said, praise the Lord for all who fear, not some, for all who fear God and trust in him are blessed beyond expression. Somebody said, that is me. They are blessed beyond expression. Yes, happy is the man. Who delights in doing his commands? Verse 2. His children shall be honored everywhere. I say your children will not bring you shame. His children shall be honored everywhere. For good men's sons have a special inheritance or a special inheritance. Verse 
God's reward system. It took Caleb 40 years. They were still giants in the land. It didn't really matter to him because he knew God who promised is able to do what he promised. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If God did not forget Caleb, I declare that God will not forget you. Verse 3. Him himself. Oh, I like this. I like this. He said, him, he, himself, shall be wealthy. And his good deed will never, never be forgotten. No. I declare that your testimony will at last you. Your good deeds will at last you. When others are being remembered for their wickedness, people will remember you for you trusted in God. Verse 4. He said, when darkness, when darkness, when trouble overtake the wicked, when darkness overtake him temporarily, he said, lights, oh, hallelujah, light will come Busting in. When trouble comes, solution will come at the same time. Are you hearing me? It's like when darkness comes, they try to harass you. They try to pull you down. They try to limit you. Because you trust in God. Because you have given to the poor. Because you have sown your seed. Because you delight yourself in the Lord. He said it doesn't really matter where they have gathered. It doesn't really matter what they have decided that the word of God will prevail in your life. In Isaiah 58, the day that sat in the kingdom of the shadow of death, light is bursting forth for them. You will not be exempted. He is kind and merciful. Praise the Lord. All right, let's round up now. We're going to round up. I said it was going to be very brief. And it's very, very, very brief. Joshua 14. Joshua 14. We were in verse 12. Okay. Now we're going to do... We'll do 12 to the last. Then we'll close. He said, when when something asks if they would like to hire a radio, is that where we were? Where is this? Joshua. Okay. So, I am asking that you give me the hay country that the Lord promised me. You will remember that as spies, we found the Anakin living there in great world cities. But if the Lord is with me, I shall drive them out. Next verse. So, Joshua blessed him and gave him Hebron as a permanent inheritance because he had followed the Lord God of Israel. Because he had followed. Because he had what? Followed. 
the Lord God of Israel because he has followed. Because he had followed. Your dedication, your time, your money that you give to God, God will reward you. God will cause men to come from afar and from near to minister blessing to you. God himself, Jehovah, will use his hand to help you. Next verse. Who was the one that blessed, that blessed Caleb? Joshua. They went to spy out the land together. But did God say anything to, 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 to Joshua when he was telling uh, Caleb, I'm going to bless you? No, he never. He never said anything to Joshua. But Joshua got the whole land and was the one that was sharing it. Verse 15. Before that time, Hebron had been called Kiria Arab after a great hero of the anarchy. And there was no resistance from the local population as the Israelites resettled the land. Somebody said there's no more resistance. Any resistance that have been in office, I declare that they are forever gone in the name of Jesus. Whatever has limited you, whatever has been forces against you that were giant in the land, that were occupying the land, it might be poverty, it might be insufficiency, it might be sickness, it might be lack of favor, it might be generational curses, it might be the working the, the walking of the kingdom of darkness against you. I declare that those resistance are all removed in the name of Jesus Christ. Every strong man, every giant occupying the land that God has given you, as he gave Caleb rest and gave Israel rest. I declare that rest is yours in the name of Jesus. As this month is our month of relief, I declare that permanent relief is coming your way in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that belongs to you, that you desired, that God has promised, that you have prayed for, that you have sown seed for, that have not manifested up to this moment. I declare by the grace and the anointing of the Holy Ghost, there be a release now from heaven in the name of Jesus Christ. Every spirit of argument that have argued with God's blessing, that have argued against God's blessing in your life, either in the quiet places or in the high places. I declare that they are frustrated right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Every devourer, you are walking, you are doing the best you can and nothing seems to be progressing. I declare that God that causes, that causes the earth to bring forth in his season and in his time, I declare that that favor will work on your behalf. In the name of Jesus, every effort you put in will yield maximum results. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, every man, every woman, every organization, every government that need to give to you by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, I declare that that in which you seek is now released in Jesus' name. Whatever has caused you problem, whatever has caused you sleepless nights, whatever has caused worry in your life, 
I declare that they terminate this afternoon in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that has caused stress where you need relief, I don't know what it is. I ask the word of God that is able to unveil. The word of God that is able to divide into asunder. The word of God that is able to penetrate into bones. The secret of hearts. I declare that that word of God will go to the root of it and destroy it in the name of Jesus. And cause release to spring forth right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Caleb said, as my strength was 40 years ago, so is my strength now. I declare in the name of Jesus that you will go from strength to strength. In the name of Jesus, from success to success, from victory to victory. In the name of Jesus Christ. God did not say because it was 40 years ago. I have forgotten the promise. Every promise that God has made to you, I declare that it will be fulfilled in your time. In the name of Jesus Christ, it will be fulfilled in the right time. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible said you shall be the head and you will not be the tail. I declare over you that everywhere you need to reign and to rule, that God will enthrone you. In the name of Jesus, and so shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.